Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Tyson, and today we're gonna to be covering workflows inside of ClickFunnels 2.0. Workflows are a great way to automate and streamline a lot of the processes inside of ClickFunnels 2.0. And today we're gonna to be covering how to set them up, how to manage them, and how to customize them based off of what your business needs. Okay, with that said, whether you're new or if you've been around the block a few times within ClickFunnels and you're just trying to learn a little bit more about ClickFunnels 2.0 specifically, then this video is gonna be for you. All right, let's go ahead and dive into workflows here. I'll meet you inside of ClickFunnels 2.0. Okay, we're inside of ClickFunnels 2.0. Now, when it comes to workflows, there are two ways that we can create these. One is gonna be inside of the funnel directly, and the second way is going to be inside of the marketing tab here. Now, I will cover both of them because there are benefits to each and a little bit different setup process for, for both of them. So let's go ahead and set up a, a workflow on this particular funnel first, and then we'll work our way back to the marketing tab over there. Okay, now once the page loads, we're gonna go ahead and just hover to the right hand side of the first step in the funnel, which is this guy right here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and hover over there and we'll see that there's a little lightning bolt icon that kind of appears when I hover near it. That is the one we're actually aiming to, to click on here. So click on it directly and from there, go ahead and select new workflow over here on the right hand side. Awesome. Okay, from here, let's go ahead and give us a name. We'll call this workflow setup example. There we go. And in this case, we're gonna use the option of opting in. So there are a few options here. There's, I mean, there's definitely a ton of options that we can choose from in different use cases, but in this case, we're gonna go for opt-in. Uh, the other options are gonna be such as calendar events, and you'll be able to set that up inside of the marketing tab, and I'll cover that in a second. Same with subscription here as well, or subscription canceled. Uh, but we also have the option to uh, trigger a workflow based off of a tag added or a tag removed, um, an order that was successful. So if you are adding this to an order form funnel step, that would be definitely something that you'd want to use, right? Um, subscri subscription upgrade or downgraded, right? Sales contact entered stage. So if there's specific stages that you have set up already within different workflows, this is gonna come into play here or uh, within pipelines. And that will be in a future video to come, but uh, for now just know it is a possible possibility. Okay, and then there is opt-in and page view. Now again, we're gonna be using opt-in here in this case. Go ahead and click on create workflow and it'll bring us into the overview page here to actually set up and use this workflow. Now, if you wanna collapse and not actually see the funnel over here on the left-hand side, uh, it's great because you can hop back to any of these steps, but we can close that for now. Um, and just click on the little hamburger icon there. If you wanna see it and have it come back, again, just click on the little hamburger icon and it will come on back. Okay. With that said, we are inside of the workflow editor. Now we have our trigger in place and essentially the trigger we set up was once someone opts inside of this funnel step that we are attaching the workflow to, it's going to uh, force this workflow over here to run. So essentially it's going to trigger it and uh, force us to go through the sequence that we set up, right? So we, in this case, are using opt-in, someone opts in, then it will trigger the workflow. Okay, uh, now we wanna add some steps to the actual workflow, right? So we'll click on a little node icon here and we'll see some options appear on the right-hand side. Uh, there's a bunch of different options from sending an email to send a message hub message, which is again, it's a whole other video there. There's a lot to cover for message hub. But below that we have asset. So if you have any digital assets that you'd like to attach and send out, maybe if you're uh, setting up maybe a lead squeeze and you wanna send out your actual uh, lead magnet. That's a possibility if it's something that people are able to download and, and view. Anyways, that's an option there. Uh, conditional split paths. We have split paths, we have delays, trigger another workflow. End workflow, uh, conditional goal, meaning when someone meets a goal, it'll jump to that portion within a workflow and skip over all the other things But before that. Um, super useful. Moving down, we can tag contacts, we can add notes inside of the contact profile, we can notify users within your account. So either yourself or you have partners or employees that you'd like to be notified when someone performs an action or actually, you know, either opts in or makes a purchase, you can set up a notification right here. And it'll I give you the option to notify you either by email or directly inside of the platform or both. Totally up to you. Okay, scrolling down, we have the option to create opportunity. This is more or less through the pipelines, uh, which again is another video. But moving down, we have enrollment, unenroll contact, grant, community access, revoke community access, third-party integrations, and webhooks. 
All right, there was a decent amount of things there, but these things are gonna be the bread and butter of setting up and automating a lot of the things that uh, you would not wanna do uh, manually, such as sending out an email every time someone opts in, right? Someone opts into this funnel, you probably do not wanna have a notification or, or you know, be on edge when someone opts in, so that we have to send out a broadcast email as soon as they opt in. This is gonna take care of that. We can send an email, so just as an example, we'll click on this. You can choose from ClickFunnels templates, promotional templates, all this good stuff right here, uh, previous templates that you've already used, or your own uh, templates that you've already created. You can also create a new template over here and start from scratch if you'd like to. Uh, in this case, for an example, I'm gonna go ahead and select this guy right here. All right, we'll go ahead and just change the name. We'll call it workflow example email. There we go. For the subject line, we will say, hey, glad to have you here. <laughs> there we go. Okay, for the headline, just say, um, we are excited to have you here with us. Okay, right. From address, go and select the email address that you would have set up inside of your accounts. Uh, there will be another video for this linked in the description below in case you want to check that out. But this guy right here, just go and select the one that you want to use in this case. I'm going to use this one and we'll go ahead and click on create. Okay. With that set up, now we have to go and actually edit the email. You go through and click on this little icon here. You can set up your email you want to send out. In this case, we just say, hi, <laughs> just hello. Thanks for opting in. Appreciate you and uh, all the time you're spending with us. All right. Hey. I appreciate you. Boop. There we go. Super simple. All right, go ahead and publish. And once you publish, you should be good to go, meaning that the email is now good to go. Once someone actually gets to this point in the workflow, this will be sent out. We'll go ahead and click on to the left-hand side here to actually exit the workflow or the email editor here. Anywhere over there will do. Or you can click on the back arrow over here. Boop. There we go. Sometimes you have to work or click directly on the actual uh, step in the workflow sequence to get out. But either way, we are out now. And let's say we want to add a delay and send another email, all right? Delay, there we go. I'm just giving you an example here. And once you click on that, it's going to give you an option to set up the delay timer, how long you want to actually be there. Oh, maybe I didn't actually add it there. There we go. And we'll go ahead and just do one day, one day delay. Perfect. There we go. Uh, now there's a delay. Actually, I accidentally added it above the email, but I'm going to go ahead and pull it down. There we go. So the email sent right away, and then there's a day delay, and then we can set up anything else after that. Now, these are just examples. Obviously, you can customize it however you want, but workflows can trigger whatever. So let's say someone is purchasing access to a course. They're, they're uh, purchasing a membership that you have set up here that uh, you have a course for and uh, you want to give them access. Awesome. Go down and click on enroll, right? There we go. And from there, you can go ahead and select the course that you want to give them access to. You can actually customize which ones they have access to, um, which modules. There we go. You can also drag and drop. It looks like it's giving me a little bit of grief here by clicking on it. But uh, anyways, we'll go ahead and choose this one right here. So if I want to give access to the entire course, I can click directly on it, right? If I want to do just one module, I can go ahead and select an individual module and click on create step. There we go. So when someone gets to this point in time, after day has passed, they'll be enrolled in that first module. Okay, now let's say we have everything set up how we want it. Uh, we're ready to go and ready to move on and uh, make sure this thing is live. All we have to do is go over here to the right hand side where it says status, click on this directly, and this is going to enable the workflow. All right, uh, it's going to show a little pop up on the screen just like this. Hit enable once, and after that, you are all set. Once it's blue, you are in the clear here. So, once someone opts in now, it will trigger this workflow, it will send out an email, it will have a day delay, and after delay a uh, day, we'll enroll them in a course or a specific module in this case. Right, and again, you can customize it however you want. I'm just going over the basics here as far as how you can set it up to kind of get your mind jogging for the possibilities here. Um, one thing to point out here is that there is 30 third party integrations. So maybe you are using active campaign or get response, uh, click on third party integrations here and you can kind of scroll through the list. This is actively being up actively being updated as we speak here. Um, it seems like every other day there's a new one. 
I'm, I'm exaggerating. There's not, it's not every other day, but they're constantly adding new integrations here. Uh, you can scroll down, find the one you're looking for, connect with your account, um, even ClickFunnels Classic. So if you're a ClickFunnels Classic user and you want to send over contacts to ClickFunnels Classic, say you have um, follow-up funnels set up over there, this is a great way to do so. Okay, but anyways, there's a bunch of different options here if you don't see an option directly on the right-hand side over here um, as far as actions that you would wish to take when someone actually performs whatever action or, or meets a certain criteria um, to enter the workflow. Okay, there we are. With that said, let's go ahead and head over to the marketing tab. Okay, inside of the marketing tab, by default, when you click on marketing over here on the left-hand side, it's going to bring us into our workflows. Okay, that is perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for in this case. Um, and if we want to create a new one, you definitely can, but we can also see the one that we've already set up here as well. Uh, technically, you can add this, this particular workflow to other steps inside of other funnels if you wanted to. It is usable across the board anywhere you want inside of your account now. You can use it for specific pages if you want to. If I set up another trigger, um, I will show you each of those, but let's go ahead and just create a new workflow just because we are going over this in the marketing tab and I want to make sure that we are keeping them a little bit separate. So go ahead and say marketing tab workflow example. Okay, now a little bit different here as far as the setup process compared to when we were setting up on a funnel, right? We have the option for run type. So you can make it so this workflow is able to be ran or triggered more than once per contact, uh, or you can make it so it's just only one per contact. Totally up to you as far as how you want that to be actually functioning or how you want to function. If you want people to be able to opt in more than once to be able to receive your email over and over and over, that's totally fine. Just make sure you select this guy right here. I usually use back to back if I am looking for something like that. There we go. Uh, but in this case, we'll go with just run only once. Uh, when it comes to like send out maybe emails after someone opts in, I'll probably only send it one time. If they try to like test it more than once and they don't realize that there's an email being sent out, you don't want them to be spammed necessarily, but personal preference. If it, it, super, it definitely depends on what you're trying to set up, right? So in this case, we'll leave it as only one run per contact, go ahead and create the workflow. You can always go back and change it as well. And I'll go ahead and show you how to access that in a second. But uh, for now, it's the same view once we get past that point. Okay, uh, except we have to set up the trigger. So initially when we set up the workflow inside of a funnel, we set up the trigger directly off of the funnel step. In this case, we have to click on trigger directly, add trigger, and we're gonna go through this. So events type, here we go and scroll down. You can see that no options are actually grayed out here. So we can select uh, options such as calendar event, contact registered. Uh, the other one was subscription canceled, All right? So, so if someone cancels a subscription for any products, uh, we mentioned a course earlier, if someone cancels a subscription for a membership area or a course that you're selling, uh, you can set up a workflow that is triggered once that is canceled, right? So that way you can reach out and try to uh, ask why they're canceling. Get some more answers, maybe uh, send out a questionnaire uh, to see what is actually forcing or causing them to leave the program. All right, uh, but anyways, in this case, again, we're just gonna be super basic. We're gonna use opt-in in this case. Actually, you know what, we'll change it up. Let's do added tag. I like using that for in-person businesses. An example would be if you run like a auto detailing shop, right? Uh, it's definitely a client I've worked for, with in the past. If you want to be able to manage this inside of the platform as well to see where people are and you wanna send out emails based off of when service is fulfilled, um, I, we set this up using applied tag. Okay, so for the applied tag here, in order to actually use this, you gotta make sure to create the tag prior to doing this, prior to going and actually selecting it, because when you click in this drop down, it's only gonna show you the tags that have already been created. Um, let's pretend that this guy right here, we'll use tags as the tag <laughs> we're looking for. Um, and then right below us, you see the option to allow anonymous contact. Now, essentially what that means is, if they don't use an email or a valid email, it, it will still allow the workflow to run. Now, I typically turn this off. Um, a, an example of this is if you're using, say, like Apple. If you if an Apple user opts in inside of your funnel um, or on, a, on an Apple device or an Apple mobile device, they give you an option to um, opt in or, or use a hidden email, essentially. This is going to allow that to run. Um, in this case, I'm going to turn it off. I want an actual contact to be able to reach out to people. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and create trigger. 
There we go. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and turn this guy on. And when this is on just like this, the trigger is enabled, meaning when this condition is met, when a tag is applied to a contact and the tag that we're looking for is tags, it will trigger this workflow to run. Okay, now we'll go ahead and exit out of here. And just like that, it's basically the same from here, all right? We go ahead and add some, a step to the workflow sequence here. Let's scroll up and down, you can see all the different options. Nothing is different as far as the options you see over here on the right hand side. They are the exact same. Uh, the only options that are different are gonna be the triggers and the run types. Those are gonna be the only things that are gonna be different between the funnel steps or adding the workflow to the funnel itself versus in the marketing tab. Only difference. Everything else is gonna be the same. Um, you can technically set up workflows to be triggered by pages as well. So if someone opts in on a certain page, you can definitely trigger a workflow as well for that. I'm gonna create a trigger over here and say, opted in on, don't select anything for funnel, go to page right here and just select the correct page. You can type it in as well. I have a ton of pages, so it's, <laughs> we'll just select one random one. Uh, let's go with, there we go. Awesome. If someone opts in there on new customer center, uh, then this will trigger the workflow as well. You can have multiple triggers running at the same time. It doesn't have to be just one trigger. You can set up multiple. So we're going to create this trigger as well. There we go. You can see that they're both active. So anytime either of these is met, the contact will be run through the actual workflow, right? There we go. All right. So hopefully it answers that. Now to edit a workflow after it's already been created, you, we can go ahead and exit this. Now, before we actually exit, make sure that it is set to live if you're ready to go. So just toggle this guy, guy on and hit enable. After that, you'll be good to go. Uh, but let's go ahead and exit. Not gonna make it live in this case. And let's say we wanna edit it now that it's been created. We'll go ahead and just click on the little gear icon over here on the right hand side of the screen for that particular workflow. And there we go. We can edit the settings here, such as the run type. You can always change it in the future. You're not stuck with any one of them. Okay, and you can also archive from here as well. Okay, uh, that is it. That is how we manage, how we create, and how you can customize workflows to your needs. All right. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. I'm more than happy to help answer anything or clarify anything that I've mentioned in the video. Uh, if you have any questions that you want to be covered in a future video, go ahead and again, leave it in the comments below. I'm more than happy to help cover that as well and uh, expand the knowledge base here to make sure everyone is up to date on ClickFunnels 2.0. All right. With that said, guys, thank you for watching and hope you have a fantastic rest of your day.